the various parts of the motherboard. That's the PCI Express slot, which tends to hold the graphics card. These are PCI slots, 32-bit for older cards. Two memory modules. These are IDE slots for the uh, older style drives. These are the SATA slots for the newer serial attached drives. These two ports are USB headers. This is a PCI Express 1 slot. This is the North Hub and the South Hub. The North Hub deals with uh, the memory and interlink between the two, whereas the South Hub deals with the slower peripherals such as the uh, drives, USB, and so on. This is the motherboard. We're now going to populate it. First, the memory. A notch in the middle showing you which way around it goes. The second chip. Place it in the slot, push down and grab both the tabs until it clicks home. Next the processor. Open up the cage. Take the processor. Identify the corner with the uh, missing pin and match it up with the same on the board. Place the chip in the board, the slot there, with the tabs matching. Close the sink, pull down the retaining lever and hook under. It already has some. Uh, heat transfer compound on. We'll leave mounting the that till later. Now we're going to mount the motherboard in the case. Struts will be inserted as per the manual instructions. You then lower the board into the case, get the ports facing correctly. Until everything lines up at the back. And you can see all of the uh, little struts through the mounting holes. Now the motherboard's back in the case, we can start to attach the, uh, the elements. From the power supply, I have the main motherboard connector here. There's a clip there that shows you which side of the connector to clip it onto. Simply goes in, like that. And clips home. There's a secondary power connector with an identical clip. This motherboard has space for two but only one is necessary in this particular computer. Again, you can see the clip, they would be side by side for two, so you may connect it to either of the sledge. You can now mount the CPU cooler. Identify the ports, where the power connector is for the fan. Ensure that all of the uh, tabs are uh, done the opposite way around to the arrow because that is the way you disconnect them. Mount it over the CPU. Take all four tabs and push them. And 
all are secure, you'll be able to feel that all of the uh, ends have clipped in. To remove the CPU, twist and lift. The power connector is right here next to it. Again, it has guides on the side to show you which way around it goes. The cooler has a little bit of cable track to stop the uh, wires getting in the way of the fan. So now it spins freely. Next we'll mount the drives. hard drive, firstly, slots into its slot, now it still need a power connection, this is a SATA power connection, it will then need its data cable, this is a SATA data cable, next to the drive, and to the first SATA port as they're marked 1 and 2 on the board. Next we can mount the CD drive. This case is simply a clip-in one, where there are clips here which attach to the screws that have been assembled in the drive. It simply pushes in, clicks home, This drive uses a Molex power connection from the power supply. And an IDE cable onto the motherboard. You may connect it to either of the IDE slots. It's usually advisable to use the first one. The notch at the top of the IDE cable shows which way it goes around. As advisable here, if you notice, that isn't an ideal way for the cable to be as it may interfere with the fan. So I'm going to tip it round here and tuck it in instead. Always try to keep this area clear of uh, obstructions. Next to mount the video card. Identify the slot you're going to put it into. In this case it's the green one. Take the card first, put the rail up against the side of the case so it sinks down, line it up with the slot and simply push down until it clicks home. And use the uh, a screw to attach it to the side of the case. Now have the motherboard headers to connect for the sound, USB, power buttons. Firstly the USB connection, they come in pairs and go into the USB header as so. These are the audio connectors which are connected to the header as described in the manual.
Lastly, we have the set for the uh, connections at the front. All indicated by the colours and again referenced by the colours that are on here and available in the manual. These have been pre-arranged. Simply attach the faceplate and this one simply pushes on. The side is then put on, which usually goes on with the lip out forward, a little to the back. On these you can see there are little notches which rely on notches on the side of the case. Then push forward to secure and attach the thumb screws at the back. The computer is then complete.